Boo. Bitch, I'm a ghost. I don't know the rest of the words, but I was trying to figure out a song that says the word ghost, and the only thing I could think of was that song, but I don't know the rest of the words. Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of 20-somethings podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, I am here in my new barren setup. Um, You can't really see, but there's this really cool chair behind me that I thrifted. I've got some new art pieces up on the wall that you cannot see because I am wearing full-on running spandex shorts on the bottom and this gorgeous metallic thrifted top on the top. And I just wasn't prepared for you to see this outfit. So we're just going to focus on what's going on from the boobies up today. So you're not going to see the full setup, but maybe in the future you will. Um, It has been a hot minute since I dropped an episode. I have just not been feeling inspired, but also I've been, I just feel like I haven't really had that much to say. I still don't really feel like I have that much to say, like genuinely guys, like I've just been good. Shocking, right? Shocking. I've literally just been good. I've been chilling. I've been in a pretty decent mood. I've been pretty productive. I've been just really focusing on my health and my family and, you know, enjoying the beautiful weather. I am terrified of global warming, obviously, and I think it's a tragedy, but also the fact that I can still go swimming on October 5th when I'm recording this and still lay out in the sun, like, is kind of a miracle at the same time, like, for my mental health anyway, because normally I'm, like, already dipping into the trenches of seasonal depression disorder at this point. So maybe it's the weather that's making me cheery, or maybe it's my new medication, but either way, I will take it. Thank you guys for tuning in today. If you're back, uh, I wanted to talk about something just super, I don't know how to, like, it's not mindless, but it's also not super serious at the same time. I've talked in bits and pieces over the course of multiple episodes, especially my story time episodes about ghosting. And it's no secret how I feel about ghosting. I think it is absolutely mean, cowardly, immature. And I'm so sick of hearing boys and girls in my generation and the younger generation or older or whatever, like everybody does it. I'm just so sick of hearing all the excuses from everybody like I didn't want to hurt their feelings or I didn't want to have to explain myself or if it were me I'd want to get ghosted so I'm just going to ghost them like I'm sick of the excuses. It's such a cop out. And of course you guys can comment or leave a review or DM me your opinions on ghosting, your experiences and as long as it's nice. You're not allowed to communicate with me if you're going to be mean and that is the rule. (laughs) I'm setting a precedent on that now. Um, And like I said, leave a review only if it's five stars. Like, that's it. Like, that's the boundary. I hate the word boundary. You guys know I hate therapy language. I hate the word boundary, but I'm going to set a boundary right now that you're not allowed to leave a review unless it's five stars. I'm feeling like a little like drunk today, even though it's literally a 920 in the morning. So I really don't know why I'm acting this way. I slept. I did sleep for like 11 hours last night. So that's probably it. So excuse me if I sound a little bit manic. I'm just in like a boppy mood today and we're going to translate it into the podcast. But I'm like, I hope this I hope this conversation doesn't bring me down. But you know what? I don't think it will because your girl has done so much work on herself this past year. I've been ghosted by three guys. I guess four. I had a date the other day with a guy in med school going to be a doctor. Literally have had more chemistry with a rock, with a tree. Like there was no chemistry at all. Um, One of the worst dates I've ever had, to be quite honest. And he ghosted me, which I, I understand in that context. And we'll get into it. We'll get into all the different circumstances of like when it is appropriate to ghost, when it's not. I still think a little text never hurt anybody, even if it was only one date, just being like, hey, lovely to meet you. Um, I didn't really feel it. Like, I don't really feel the chemistry, but I really wish you all the best. Bye. Like, I don't see the harm in that. Um, But in this one case, because we went on one date and we both, it was very obvious that there was no chemistry there and we didn't like each other. I don't really care that he ghosted because I don't feel like either of us really like owed each other that much. But that's where I like draw the line. Like, if you're just texting and they ghost, it's still disappointing, but like, eh, okay, it happens. If you go on one date and they ghost, eh, it's disappointing, but it happens. But like anything above that, in my personal opinion, like two, three dates onwards, 
an explanation is absolutely due. Um, doesn't have to be long. And I think that's where people get confused is they like think that they have to like outline an essay, you know, point by point as to why they feel like this isn't going to work. And that's really not the case. You don't have to justify your feelings or your emotions. You don't have to. And if someone's pushing back, like if someone's like, well, why do you feel this way? Or I don't agree or blah, 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 then like ghost, whatever. But as you know, all you literally have to say is like, I just wanted to let you know, um, really great to meet you. I personally don't see this going anywhere and I didn't want to waste your time and I really wish you all the best. That's it. Like you don't need to put the blame on them or put the blame on you. And if that person's going to take it super personally, that's on them. And I don't see what the harm is in that. I don't think, I think a lot of people don't want to hurt other people's feelings, but in my experience and in a lot of my friends and family's experience, it's 10 times more hurtful to be ghosted than to just get a simple text. And most people would prefer to just get the text of like, I'm not going to be speaking to you anymore, all the best, versus wondering and checking your phone and feeling like a loser because they haven't texted, and they haven't called. And did I say something? Did I do something? It You just feel dumb. Like it's embarrassing when you get ghosted to an extent. Like you just feel kind of dumb. You feel like your time isn't valued, like your presence isn't valued. You feel like you're back in like, like I just feel like I'm always back in like elementary school. I'm like, are we really doing this? Like you're just going to ignore me on the playground and pretend I don't exist after you just like pursued me and like love bombed me. Like, and I had a really bad, well, I guess it wasn't bad, but I was dating this guy briefly this year. We just went on a few dates and it didn't go anywhere. Like no, we're serious. Um, which is very confusing because he was like all in one day, like, you're like, you're like, you're so beautiful. Like you're the girl of my dreams. Please just give me a chance, please. I just want one chance. Please. And then literally out of nowhere, it was like, well, I slept with him to be honest. And then out of nowhere, out of nowhere, quote unquote, he was like, bye. But he actually had the balls at least to send me a text and be like, I don't really see this going anywhere. I don't think we're the right fit, but like you're a lovely girl. Wish you all the best. And I was a little bummed more so by the fact, like, I don't care if he doesn't like me, like, toodaloo, like, it really doesn't bug me because I know, you know, what I'm worth and what I have to offer and my value. And I really don't want to waste my time on someone who doesn't want to be with me. Like, what is the point in doing that? But it was more the fact that, like, after I slept with him, that's when he decided he didn't want me anymore, which is just so toxic and is just a, more of a reflection on that man and, like, he thinks he's looking for something serious, but clearly he's not. And he probably has all these hangups about women. And like, anyway, we'll leave that to him and his therapist to figure out. I recovered from that quote unquote breakup, like so much faster than any other guy who's ever ghosted me. And that to me right there was the proof in the pudding that like, at least me and my personality type, I need answers. Like I need to know, you don't need to give me a big long answer. Like, I don't need to know the specific moment that I pissed you off or that I said the wrong thing, but it's nice for me to know, like, okay, I will not be speaking to this person anymore, or this person is no longer a viable option, and then I can just, like, go on with my life, but when you always have that little hang up in the back of your head of, like, oh, maybe they'll reach out again, or, oh, you know, like, there's always that little glimmer of hope that, like, you'll hear from them again, or, like, extrapolate and start doing all these, like, I don't do this so much anymore. I guess when I'm talking about this conversation, I kind of want to talk more about like Sarah a year ago um, or even less than a year ago, for honest. I really have done so much work on this specific area of my mental health and my dating life because it keeps happening to me. It is literally an epidemic, like ghosting is an epidemic in today's day and age. And I'm like, you know what? This is probably going to keep happening as I continue to date, unfortunately. So I need to learn to like, deal with it in a healthy way for me and like protect myself and like protect my mental health and not get completely like not completely spiral every time a guy ghosts me because that's all you can do like you can't control someone else's actions or intentions but you can control but you can control how you react to it so now I am constantly just like it's on him it's and guys like these pronouns can be interchangeable obviously i'm a woman who dates men so like i'm going to use he him pronouns but like girls do this too girls 100 percent do this too so i could be like it's not on him or sorry it's not on me it's on him this is his hang up this is his lack of maturity his lack of communication this is a warning sign of potential toxic behavior that would happen down the line if we continued to date 
this is not a big opening for me to go try to prove to him my worth and my value. This is not an opportunity for me to teach him a lesson or educate him on how to be like, I'm not his mother. I'm not his teacher. I'm not his therapist that like goodbye. And like, I really have to remind myself of that because I used to see it almost as this, obviously as like a personal attack when someone would ghost, like, like they were trying to hurt me or they were trying to embarrass me or they were trying to play games, but not even that I would almost subconsciously see it as this challenge, I guess of like, okay, well I need to prove to them that I am worth coming back to or I am worth an explanation or I'm worth an apology or or whatever it was um or even saying kind of like this toxic stuff of like they're just ghosting me because they like me so much they're like so into me that they don't even know what to do with themselves that like they don't know what to say because I leave them speechless which I do I mean I do stand by that but like I I I kind of realized that all of those statements I was saying were so like me 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 like very egocentric all about my ego and like a lot of the times it's not about you like it's not it's that person and maybe they're still hung up on their ex maybe they do suck at communication maybe they are um an avoidant personality like an avoidant attachment which are my least favorite people to date on planet earth but that's that's a whole other thing. So yeah, that would be my like biggest piece of advice, I guess, when it comes to being ghosted is to just like create a few mantras for yourself, sayings that you can keep repeating to yourself whenever you're feeling like really triggered or really down of just reminding yourself that like it's not about me, it is about them. This is their responsibility to sort out. I'm going to continue to like be authentic and be genuine and be upfront with my feelings and my emotions just because everyone else on planet Earth seems to want to like play these games and be avoidant and be um, unattached from like every real connection. Like everyone just wants to stay detached from everything. That doesn't mean you have to do that. Keep being you, keep doing you. And it used to feel like you really do have to protect yourself because it used to feel like every single time I got ghosted or quote unquote rejected, that it was like a little piece of my heart was being like ripped out every time, like a little piece of my like self-value and like self-confidence was being ripped out. And then you kind of eventually realize that like, I'm going to be left with nothing if that's how I keep operating. Because even if I do, like God forbid, even if I do end up with the perfect guy who like loves me, values me, wants a family with me, whatever, we have kids, we do this, we do that. We've seen time and time again, girls and boys, but mostly girls, that no one is obligated to stay. And like the divorce rates are at like 60% or 65% for a reason. People will still potentially leave you, still potentially ghost you, still potentially cheat on you, still potentially, you know, traumatize you in the future, even if they like pass all the initial check marks and all the green flags. And even if they commit to a life with you, even if they put a ring on your finger, even if they give you kids, like heartbreak is kind of inevitable in this lifetime. I'm just hoping I get it all out of the way now, (laughs) but who knows? Maybe I'm destined for a life of heartbreak. Who knows? But the more you go through this stuff, the more you learn that like you really got to just prioritize yourself, your mental health, your well-being. You need to be resilient. You need to be able to pick yourself up. You need to be able to dust yourself off. You need to take breaks from dating or take breaks from whatever it is when you need to and kind of read the situation and be like, okay, this is getting toxic or whatever. And just communicate like, like talking to a person right now who I like but they're not like the biggest communicator in the world because they're very, very busy. And like they will um, just kind of like disappear for like the whole day, but then like text me at night or like not text me at night, but text me in the morning. And I'm feeling like the familiar tingles and triggers coming back of like, they don't like me. They're wasting my time. They're playing with me. They're toxic. They're this, they're that. And it's like deep breath, deep breath, deep breath. Maybe they just like Amanda always tried to tell me, maybe they're just not a big texter or not even that. Maybe they genuinely are so busy and have all these other things they're trying to prioritize that they're just texting me in the windows where they can like sit down and like write a proper text. Because this person actually does send me like nice, cute texts. It's not like they're just sending me one word answers, which is like a whole other thing. So like even this is like a test for me, you know, like whether this 
um, person goes anywhere. I don't know if it will or not, but like, this is like a test for me to like keep my shit together and see, you know, with these familiar triggers of talking to someone who's not necessarily like a big texter or not texting me back, like, you know, immediately, you know, how am I going to handle this? How am I going to navigate this? And, and it's just going to be interesting to see, cause I've been putting in so much self work and so much reflection and so much like healing and therapy. And I'm like, now that I'm, talking to these people again and dating going on dates and whatever it's like I'm interested to see how all that self-work and all of that healing like goes into practice when it comes to like actually stepping out into the world and dealing with real people like am I going to fall into the old familiar patterns or am I going to see actual change and improvement it's gonna be I'll keep you updated but so far I see a lot of improvement within myself and it's just that's the moral of the story, guys. Like, I know you don't want to hear it. I know you want some, like, quick and easy fix. Or maybe you want me to, like, feed your your delusions and tell you that, like, like all that weird fucking dark feminine stuff on TikTok. Like, if you put his name on a piece of paper and lick it three times and put it in your shoe and wear it under your left foot and then burn a fire and do this, then they will text you by 11.59 p.m. tonight. And they're going to tell you that you were the one that they always wanted. And blah, blah, like... Maybe you want me to spill some of that stuff. And maybe you want me to tell you, okay, if they leave you on red for four hours, then you leave them on red for six hours. Like if that's the advice you want, I'm not your girl. I've always hated playing games when it comes to dating, because as you guys probably know, I am an open book. I wear my heart on my sleeve. I, I have no poker face whatsoever. Like if I like you, I like you. If I don't, I don't. There is no in between. And I've always been that way. So like, I've never really seen a point in like, it wouldn't be an episode without the train, guys. I don't really see a point in playing those games because it's just not me being me and I'm just going to drive myself crazy. And it's like, I'm too old. I'm 27. I am too old to be like, okay, they waited six hours to text me. So I'm going to text them in 12 hours. And that's really going to show them guys. They don't care. Women might read into that. Like women might care. Men, I, I don't think men care. I don't think men pay attention to that stuff. I really don't. Like, maybe I'm wrong. Like, maybe I'm dead wrong. Maybe men do pay attention to that stuff. But I would be pretty sure that they don't because they're just living in the moment, you know? Sorry, I gotta keep changing my position. I'm trying to make my arms look skinnier. <laughs> so that, I guess, is just my general advice. This episode's all over the place. Typical Sarah. But that would be to, with anything in life, but specifically when it comes to dating or being ghosted or being rejected or being broken up with or whatever the context is, but specifically being ghosted is just heal. Like keep working on your triggers, keep working on your traumas, keep working on positive self-talk, positive self-love, whatever energy you are expending on that person that's not giving it back to you, redirect that and recycle it and put it back into yourself. Don't keep putting it out into the void where it's not being appreciated. Take that energy that you're sending out to that person and put it back into yourself and keep yourself busy. Keep yourself distracted. Do not just sit around like a watched pot never boils or like a watched phone never rings. Like don't keep staring at your phone. Go out and do things. Go to a workout. Go shopping. Go hang out with friends. Like don't put your life on hold for that person in the odd chance that they text you. We've all done it. I'm not judging. We've all done it. Like this guy that I'm texting, I do really like him clearly. And I could tell I liked him because every time last night my phone would buzz, I'd like pop out of bed and like check my phone excitedly. And then it would be like my brother or something. And I'm like, ugh, love you. Love you. Love you, Nikki. But like that to me, I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. I, I clearly, I like this guy, but I need to like chill. I need to have a little chill pill because there's a chance he's not going to text me tonight and I don't want to go to bed disappointed. So like, you know, redirect that energy, like redirect that focus and just having that dialogue with yourself is really important keeping yourself grounded now if you are a ghoster listen up i'm gonna give you some tough love cut that shit out don't be that person like i don't care what person told you that oh i don't want to know okay the people who say that stuff like i don't want to know if you don't like me just never speak to me again those people are like triggered and traumatized in their own way like those are not healthy people <laughs> like I mean we're all we're not none of us are healthy like we're all unwell we're all unwell but like 
those people are very avoidant, clearly, if that's like the way that they want to cope with things. They don't want like, so I wouldn't really take those people's advice. If you talk to most people who have like genuine intentions and like really want to meet someone, like they do want to, they do want to know that it's not going anywhere. This is the end of the road. You know, they, they want that clarity. And just to feel like the time and effort or potential money or whatever it was that you put into pursuing this was somewhat appreciated. Like if you did go on multiple dates with someone or spend money on them or spend time texting them or trying to set up plans or ask about how they are, like just little things like that, just putting in that emotional labor of getting to know someone. Like I feel like the least you can do is just be appreciated for like, trying I guess you know like it's just seems so juvenile to me personally to just pretend that person doesn't exist like to just like never speak to them again and to me that's the biggest red flag of all like I cannot tolerate guys who ghost anymore like I even girls even friends just anyone who ghosts like I'm just like ew that's my genuine reaction and if you're one of those people then I'm then that's how I feel not about you overall I'm sure you're a fine person but like I do think, I do think we need to stop just like making jokes and making light of people ghosting. Like, I think we live in this world with all these memes and like TikToks and it's just like, ooh, ghost, like ghosted him or I got ghosted. Ha 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 ha. Like, it's just become this like normalized joke. Um, oh my God, my head is getting like cut off. <laughs> so my tripod was broken this whole time and that's probably why the height of the video is going to keep dropping, dropping, dropping. Everyone has, I guess, like different rules and regulations for like what's fine to ghost and what's not. I think most people could agree that if you go on like two or three dates, then you should talk to them and tell them that you're not interested in pursuing it. Certainly, <laughs> when I tell you, you guys know if you listen to the story time um, from last year, listen to the story time about, I don't have his name in there, but the guy from England who ruined my life. And people literally, like, this man, basically, we were, like, dating. I told him I loved him. I went over to visit him, spent thousands of dollars to go visit him. He promises he's going to come to Canada. If you want the full juicy story, then go listen to that episode. But basically, this man had already done this to me three years prior. This was me giving him a second chance. And he had already, like, ghosted me in the thick of us, like, seeing each other and, like, FaceTiming and, like, meeting each other's family. Like, it was serious enough I wouldn't say we were maybe like official official boyfriend and girlfriend but we were like quite serious and uh, to my understanding exclusive um and he had already ghosted me like ghosted me three years prior and then I kind of talked to him about it when he expressed interest in in pursuing me again and I was like the only way and I was very clear from the get-go the only way I'm going to do this is if you will not ghost me like I need to know that that pattern of behavior that that defense mechanism is dead and gone because I cannot go through that again and he was like I would never ghost you never 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 I was like reject me all you want stomp my heart into the ground but say it with words like do not ghost me like if you don't want to be with me, please just tell me, but do not ghost me. That's all I asked. That was like my number one thing going into this relationship. I promise I won't, I won't, I won't. And then he did. And he was supposed to move to Canada, guys. So that is a scenario where under no, under no semblance of reality, is that okay to ghost someone? Like that is someone who is mentally unwell, in my personal opinion. Like you literally have promised someone that you want to date and that you're serious about that you want to go move to the country their country to be with them you had them fly over and like meet your whole family meet your friends and like and he would ghost for like two weeks at a time or like a week and a half at a time so I would literally have people when I was telling them like oh he's ghosted people be like well oh, that sucks on to the next one type thing like as if it was just like a guy I went on one date with and that was what was frustrating I guess is I was like if any of you bitches were getting ghosted by like your boyfriend right now or like the guy that you were in love with who like promised you the world, you would be in shambles. But it's just like, it's just treated so casually, I guess, in my opinion is what I'm trying to say. Like, and especially the person who is ghosting, I feel like there's a denial going on in their head where it's like, they're not going to care. They're going to get the message. Like, it's better off for them that I don't say anything where like in reality, you need to be like, aware of the amount of like turmoil and stress and insecurity you're causing that person depending on the scenario but like 
for this guy, for example, like I made it very clear to him whenever we did talk, which was not very often because he was Casper the ghost. But I'm like, you are ruining my life. Like you're ruining my mental health. Like I can't eat. I can't sleep. I feel so dumb. I feel so embarrassed. Like I was very harsh on him because I was like, you can't just walk around life thinking that this is a good way to treat someone. And this is like a gentle, kinder way to date. Like you can't be serious. Like we are in our mid twenties, mid to late twenties. Like you cannot think that this is the right way to go about things. Like, so in that case, I resigned myself to being his mother and his teacher and trying to teach him. And I still think he's going to do the same thing to the next girl and the next girl because once a ghoster, always a ghoster. Like, I kind of do believe that if I'm being honest, like, which is sad. I mean, I think you can grow out of it a little bit. Like, maybe if you ghosted when you were 18 or 19, like, hopefully you grow out of that. But I dated a guy who was 29 this year, and we went on two really great dates. Um, We, like, like, really great dates. Like, we went out to dinner, we went to a dog park, we were talking about our lives and our families and what our hopes are for the future. And he was like, I can't wait to see you again. I really want to see you. And I'm like, great. Like texting me, you know, when are you free? And then I would tell him and then he would disappear for like three days. And then I would like follow up and I'm like, hey, just checking if we're actually doing anything this weekend. And then he'd be like, oh, sorry, I'm busy next time. And then I'd be, and then I would just leave it. And then he'd be like, so when are you free? And then I'd answer and then he'd disappear and ghost for like four days. And then eventually he just ghosted all together, like point blank period, just like disappeared off the face of the earth. And that again is the scenario where I'm like, not cool. In my opinion, not cool. Like you led me on to think there was going to be another date that you liked me, that you were interested in me. It's n- it's not like he just like was like, bye, nice to meet you. Like he was like, can't wait to see you again. Like I'll text you. Like can't wait to do this again. Like you get someone's hopes up, right? And you make them think that you're, that they're on the same page as you are and whatever. And in that case, whether it's a friend, a family or a romantic partner, if you make plans with someone like we are doing something this Friday and then you just like never speak to them again or never clarify the plans or never reschedule, like you're an ass people you have to value people's time and people's effort and people's schedules like you can't just like play around with people's lives like that in my opinion like that's not how I was raised and I just I hate how unfortunately we live in a dating culture right now where that type of stuff is just like oh whatever they'll get the hint like I don't like that especially if you're a girl you need to do your hair your makeup you need to wax you need to shave you need to tan it takes a lot of mental and physical preparation for a date and then to just get someone's hopes up and ghost is like disgusting to me quite on quite honestly but like obviously whatever that situation is dead and gone i ended up seeing him at a bar a few weeks later with some girl who he was all over like kissing and they were clearly dating and i was like oh so clearly he was dating multiple people which whatever is not a crime like when you're online dating or whatever like you kind of unfortunately have to anticipate that Um, but I was like, oh, and even I had to really like process in that moment. Oh, I guess he liked her better than me. Like she's, she's hotter than me. She's skinnier than me. Like no wonder, like I was really like out here being a little bit pathetic for a second, but I'm going to give myself that you're allowed in the moment. Like I really liked this guy. He was so freaking hot, horrible person, maybe not horrible. That's like dramatic, but like very immature and like clearly playboy energy, like not a person that I want in my life as a friend or anything, but like very attractive person. And we had like similar lifestyles and I was like, Oh, I really liked this guy. And so I was disappointed. And then seeing him with another girl who was like just so different from me in every way, like super tiny, super short, like brown hair, tan skin, like it was just a little bit of a mind fuck. And I'm like, oh, okay. Like clearly he was dating both of us at the same time and he chose her. And like, I wonder why he chose her and like, what does she offer that I can't offer? Like, and I went through that like self conscious dialogue in my head for like a day. And I was kind of feeling sorry for myself for like a day. And then I like snapped out of it. And I was like, Sarah, nothing against her, nothing against me. Maybe she's just more his type. Maybe she offers whatever. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, I I couldn't tell you. I don't I don't want to know. I don't need to speak to this man. I don't want to kill any more brain cells trying to talk to this man. But like, and then I, I was like, and also let's not let's not like 
be weird and toxic towards this girl like because there was a part of me that's like oh like me 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 like I was a bit jealous like if I'm being honest like I was being a bit of a jealous bitch vibe and then I'm like she's just a girly girl she's one of us like you know we must stand together and I actually find it kind of felt a little bit bad for her (laughs) because I'm like I have a feeling just my gut intuition but also kind of the way he handled things with me that this guy is not ready for a relationship he's a bit of a playboy he's a bit of an ass and he's probably going to mess around with her and like break her heart and I don't want that for this girl I mean of course I'm not going to do or say anything like that's not my place but so then I kind of like was like oh maybe this was maybe you dodged a bullet like they say and of course like every time you get ghosted or like heartbroken by a guy like of course deep down you know that it's probably for the best and you dodged a bullet and like in the future when you reflect you can you can say like oh I dodged a bullet like if this guy's gonna ghost me then like he's not the type of guy I want to be with anyway but in the moment like it hurts and it sucks and it's triggering and it's frustrating and you also need to give people like a little bit of space to feel upset like it is very upsetting to be ghosted whether you're 75 or whether you're 17 like it's just a shitty feeling and I think it's okay for someone to be upset about that for like a day or two um and you don't need to automatically be like oh well dodged a bullet or like oh well whatever like you don't you know you don't need to be like dismissive of it because it is considered to be such a casual thing that happens nowadays like it still is very painful for a lot of people so just keep that in mind I guess if someone's like feeling upset that they got ghosted like maybe just have you know a little bit more patience for them than maybe you want to have because maybe you're like oh you know I warned her this would happen or whatever but like it's it sucks and like remember that one time you got ghosted or you got stood up on a date and remember how shitty you felt and like try to put yourself in that person's shoes but also you know I think at the same time I've learned this the hard way like the sooner you can snap yourself out of victim mode the better the sooner you can remove that personalized element from it the better and I guess it's like overall like if you're being ghosted I would say try to like remove the emotions from it and like remove the personalized element from it whereas if you are about to go someone or you have ghosted someone you'd actually need to like do the opposite where you need to put more emotion into it you need to put more compassion into it you need to think about that other person and and how that might affect them not everyone is like a player out here not everyone has like steel bars around their heart and like art is jaded like some people like me actually are looking for like romance and a real connection and authenticity and like and we actually kind of believe people when they say they like us when they say they want to see us like sue me I believe you (laughs) I'm gonna take your word for it like I I'm not good with the games and the subliminal messages and stuff and a lot of people aren't and a lot of us are just out here trying to like hope for the best so just keep that in mind if you are the type to just ghost people is like there are real world repercussions and consequences and I'm not out here to demonize anyone who's ever ghosted someone we've all done it like I've done it too but I've never done it ever if I've actually met them in person more than a few times and like started like getting feelings and could tell they had feelings or like we kissed or we did anything sexual like never 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 the only time I've ever ghosted someone is if we were just texting and like I just wasn't feeling it or we went on one date and it was a horrible date and it was a mutually horrible date and we just never spoke again and in those two cases I think it's okay um because that person also ghosted like it's that's another thing if that person is like reaching out and clearly wants like another date or want some sort of answers and want some sort of clarity like give it to them like don't be an ass like if someone's like hey I'm just checking in to see if you're interested in pursuing this or not like answer them you freaking coward like answer them or if they're like hey I really enjoyed our date would you be interested in another one if you're not interested just say that like don't be an ass don't be a coward they have the guts and the courage to reach out to you and to check in on you and to put themselves out there. The least you can do is answer them honestly. And yes, it might sting a little bit in that moment to be quote unquote like turned down. But in my opinion, it's much better to have your ego bruised for like 10 minutes and then move on with your life versus being strung along or like for like 
days. Like, where did they go? What happened? Did I say something? Did I do something? Like, that to me is way worse. And just feeling like you're irrelevant. Like, they never cared about you in the first place. They never had intentions of seeing you in the first place. Like, to me, that that's a lot more, like, torturous than to just, like, be told up front. Um, but that's just my opinion. This is all just my opinion. But I'm sure I will resonate with some people with this episode. Or maybe, maybe this will be the kick in the ass that you need to stop ghosting people really try to do that work of like healing and building up that self-love where I'm like in a much healthier place with it and if it does happen to happen to me like I'm good but that took a lot of work and a lot of like self-reflection so yeah that's the moral of the story guys you, no matter what's going on in your life you got to keep investing in yourself you got to keep being self-aware you got to keep bettering yourself because life is not going to get any easier unfortunately and people are unpredictable. And I gotta get going. I'm gonna do a little workout and then go to the county to um, spend some time with my dad and my dog, which will be super fun. And then it's Thanksgiving this weekend. Um, so happy Thanksgiving to all my Canadian turkeys. I love you guys so much. Have an amazing day and uh, don't be a ghost. <laughs>